Good morning, everybody. It's Daniel Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Today, guys, we're going to take you around the place here, and we want to show you some things that we've direct sowed, some things, different ways of starting our seeds and um, starting in containers, different things like that. But that's not all we want to show and talk about today. We want to talk about the sequence of the blooming of things and how things are all out of sequence now. Uh, here in front of me, I have a white peach that I raised from a seed, oh gosh, probably 20 years ago, I reckon. I mean, it's been a long time. And this tree is usually one of my first trees to bloom every year. And it usually gets frostbitten and loses all of its peaches except for three or four peaches. This year, this tree is just now starting to bloom and put leaves on. And I have other peach trees that already have peaches the size of the end of your thumb on them. I do have other seedlings that still don't even have a leaf on them yet. They have no blooms, no leaves. They're just sticks sitting out there. And I think that's just so unusual that the peaches on some have already have big peaches and some of them don't even have any leaves yet. And here are our citrus trees. The peach tree is blooming at the same time that our citrus trees are starting to bloom. Uh, that is, guys, that's just really highly unusual. Now, these are all the citrus trees. I'm going to show you here. This uh, Awari Satsuma here is just starting to, man, it's starting to pop everywhere. And then we have this, uh, I think this is an orange here. This is our uh, a Hamlin Sweet Orange. It's starting to put on some blooms in here, getting ready. Look at all, oh, look at all the blooms back in there starting to pop out. This here is a Kalamondan orange. First time it has ever tried to bloom. It's starting to bloom. And look at this. The Kalamondan orange right beside it just died. For no apparent reason. All of them identically the same. That one just all the leaves are dying on it, falling off. Have no no explanation for it. This is our orange tree, our Louisiana orange that had so many oranges on it last year. Uh, the freeze really hit it hard. Even though we had it covered and everything, I went back and trimmed all the dead off of it. Now it's starting to pop and put out new leaves. Uh, it's not showing any signs of blooming at the moment. So now whether or not it's going to go through a season where it doesn't bloom at all because of the hard freeze, I don't really know. We'll have to wait and see on this one. Now this one here was the pomelo. Uh, remember it had all the big giant blooms on it and they, people talked about the size of the fruits and all that was on it. Well, the cold came and every one of them fell off. So uh, once again, this year, it probably will have nothing on it, but I'm okay with that because really it's still a little too small to actually be uh, holding a fruit that size anyway. And this here, guys, is our key limes. Uh, this one is starting to put up lots of new buds are starting to come out on it there to bloom all around on it. Now, I don't know um, if it's actually going to work or not because a lot of them came out when it was kind of cool here the other day. And I don't know if they're going to actually take or if they're going to fall off. I'm just not 100% sure. Um, they don't look really good uh, on these trees. On this one, uh, some of those haven't even budded out. Yeah, some of those haven't budded out good, but they just don't look really good. And this here was our kumquat, our tart kumquat. Uh, it has literally been bit back pretty good, so it's got to re-come out all over again. Didn't we lose one? Uh, we lost one of our kumquats. Yes, it froze. Now, this here is our Meyer lemon. We have it stuck back into a corner in the building in here. And it's now beginning to put on some nice little blooms. Uh, and guys, it's, it's in the mid-50s out here this morning. I'm actually cold sitting here with a uh, long sleeve shirt on with a t-shirt on under it. Because the wind is blowing a little bit. We're kind of down in a nook right here where the wind's not hitting us too much yet. And yesterday it was 86. Uh, yeah, 86 to 87 yesterday. Yeah, it was um, screaming hot yesterday. Cold front come through last night. And now we're sitting out here over 55 degrees this morning. And it's just, the plants don't know what to do. Oh, guys, this right here, 
was a rooting off of my uh, tangelo tree that got froze and killed. Ms. Wanda come out here and planted it in her little herb garden. And this thing has become a massive tree now in the last few years. And I do every so often see a few white blooms pop up on it, but I've never seen a fruit on it anywhere. I don't know if it's just gonna be a pretty shade tree uh, or if it's actually ever gonna bear anything. I don't really know. Well guys, this here is one of the apple trees that I planted based on an elderly lady telling me how to plant a stick in the ground and make it grow on a specific day of the year. I have a video on that you can find it if you can watch it. But uh, this apple tree is just now blooming. And apple trees are one of our first trees to bloom out here at Deep South Homestead. And now, this year, they're one of our last trees to bloom out like the peach tree. It just, that's totally wild. The apples always bloom ahead of the peaches here except for this year, it didn't work that way. Well guys, here we are to our blackberries. I mean, they got a lot of green berries on them here. Look at that one. Uh, it's done got to be a big old berry. The cold kind of got to it a little bit. Um, this is the, uh, oh, this is the Arkansas Traveler. It's kind of early this year, kind of like way early. Was it good? Not as sweet as they normally are. It was a wasn't nothing like a wild blackberry. It just had a little bit of a tart taste to it. I think it's because it's so early this year. But we're up here now. This is our Cherokee yellow wax beans, and I've got I would say I probably have a hundred percent stand on it now. Uh, the first time we planted it came that hard freeze and the ground was damp and wet and it uh they just didn't do good i came back and replanted by hand again and now i have almost a hundred percent stand and i still have some right here that's just now popping through right here right there that one's just now starting to get ready to pop up now this is direct sowed in the ground our beans and peas and stuff like that, we always direct sow. We don't ever plant them in containers and move them to the garden. We've had better results with them just direct sowing straight into the soil. Well, I would say this coming week, I would be plowing it with the Cub tractor, but we're talking about rain all next week. So with the exception of one day, I think. And if that is the case and it holds true, then I probably will not get to do any plowing on these and it really bothers me because I really want to get them plowed before they get to be too big. I'll give you an update on the sweet potatoes. Now we had a almost a four inch rain here a few days ago and the sweet potatoes are doing really good. Uh, this is why I told y'all I didn't want to plant them up on a bed. I put them in furrows because the dirt would wash down and fill the furrow in and it leaves me room to still bed them up and the potatoes will be deep in the ground. And these are doing really well. So I'm kind of pleased. Come on, get you some leaves. Come on. That's a good boy. Yeah. Eat all them leaves off. That's what I like about Dexter's. Dexter's are browsers. They're going to enjoy Pecan Grove next week, aren't they? Oh, if I get them over there. <laughs> We're going to get them over there. If they'll go in the trailer. Now here's another one of my little peaches I planted from a seedling. It's just now starting to bloom. This tree is only two and a half years old, guys, and it's already blooming. It's doing fantastic. Um, now here's one that's a seedling. It already has, look at the size of the peaches on this one. It's got peaches that size and on the limbs here. Now this one here kind of concerns me because something broke that limb and there's these peaches on it. Last year this tree probably had a hundred peaches on it. And this year it's just got a few sporadic ones on it here, around on it. 
it withstood the cold. The freeze came while it was blooming, and that's where all the peaches got knocked off of because of the freeze. Now here is another one of the apple trees that I did the way the old lady told me by putting a stick in the ground on a certain day of the year, and it's just now. We've never had apples on these yet. No, this first year they bloomed. Yeah. Uh, this is actually blooming this year. So and this, how old is these trees? Probably oh, six, man. eight years old. These trees are probably six to eight years old. And this is the Anna apple. This is an Anna, which is one of the only apples that will grow in the deep south down here and make an apple on the tree. Now, lots of them make beautiful trees, but they don't make apples. Make lots and lots of apples. Make lots of apples. And this is our blueberries. The clover is finally putting on the red heads up on it. And that, my friends, is what we've been waiting for, is for this stuff to go to seed. Now, we're going to leave it. You know, it looks trashy and it looks horrible, but that's permaculture. That's putting nitrogen back in the soil. We have not fertilized these blueberries this year. We're going to see how well the nitrogen fixing process works versus putting the uh, uh, fertilizer out by hand. Well, while we were sitting here talking about the blueberries, we come over here and looked at our huckleberry tree because I saw a bird in it. And I told one, I said, if there's a bird in that tree, they got to be huckleberries ready. And look at here, guys. This tree is literally loaded with huckleberries. Now, this is a natural. It's a wild, natural huckleberry. And a lot of people said they didn't know they were um, in the deep south. Yes, Louisiana, Alabama. Oh yeah, in the Mississippi, deep south, these Florida, things grow in the river swamps and stuff like this. this and is... they are bushes, yeah. not trees. I guess if they and we have some over at Pecan Grove that are like trees. Oh yeah, they're biggest trees. Over they there. will get that big if left alone, I guess, eventually. But yeah, we dig them up in the wild and bring them and plant them in specific places. I got to do some cleaning out around this one, but man, this one is loaded, ain't it? Look and at that. That, that is wild huckleberries. This is the first year we've had huckleberries this size when it rains right before they turn they get bigger yes and they're not blueberries they're not wild blueberries we no. do have a wild we blueberry do have a wild blueberry tree up on the uh, top of the field up yonder way up yonder somewhere way up yonder is a wild <laughs> blueberry and it just came up volunteer but look at this this is called permaculture at its best all right, guys, we're in my high tunnel where I direct sowed a lot of things in here. And one of them was the cucumbers before this second freeze. Yeah, it was before the freeze. Yeah. And I kind of covered them a little bit, I think, with bags and stuff. And they did take a hit. They did have a little bit of disease and stuff. But I have cucumbers. Plenty of blooms. But where's my cucumbers? I saw some a while ago right here. Yeah, you got cute, sir starting one right there so we do have cucumbers starting now we'll see what happens from there if it warm up they'll go ahead and uh and do pretty good i believe yeah now, you've got your direct sowed uh looks like cherokee these are the cherokee yellow wax beans and i had planted one time and it came that freeze so they didn't come up but this is a second planting even in a high tunnel sometimes that happens yeah. And all of these are up. This Looks is a, like a pepper. pepper that a lady sent me. She calls it a crazy pepper. It's a sweet pepper, but it look, it's a little, looks like little hot peppers, but it's sweet. And she said it produces like crazy. So I put it in the ground, and it's doing pretty good. But I put three others in the ground here, and something eat them off. These are okra that I direct sowed, and usually okra does not come up very fast. These came up within a week. I covered them during the cold. These are bush okra that we got from Grow Family Network. So we're going to, um, looks like they're going to pull through. Um, the English peas I direct sowed. Yeah, there's a lot of them that's, uh, that's ready to pick. We need to get these off today for a salad or something. Yeah, uh, I like to make that. English pea salads. And the other day we did stir fry and I threw a handful of them in it. And yeah. That was pretty really, good. Really good. Yeah. She, <laughs> so she tricked me. She had some. I, I said, "Man, what is this unusual taste?" And it was bacon grease. She saved our bacon grease, and uh, 
cook that stir fry and that bacon grease. Because we have carrots yeah. outside. We had mm -hmm. some English peas. We had a few uh, fingerling potatoes. Um, yeah. And I threw some zucchini out of the freezer over in there. Mm -hmm. And some green beans. And I've got some yellow wax beans ready, too, I think. Yeah. Lots of people wanted to know about the giant aloe and the blooms. This is what it looks like. Um, just comes out and does that. I don't know. And then it falls off. Now I've direct sowed some more um, Cherokee yellow wax beans. Looks like they're all coming up. Burgundy under the tomatoes here. And look at my tomatoes. You got tomatoes that's ready to pick. These went through two hard, hard freezes. freezes. And look at this. Look at this one. Isn't that pretty? You can pick those. We got to have tomatoes. This yeah, is our tomato. first. What are these? The these are uh, beef steak. Beef steak. Oh, look down here. And look. Look at this one. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Might as well take it. Might as well take it. I mean, you can't beat that for April. What? April. The and, second. Yeah. I mean, and there's more of them down here turning. I mean, there's yeah, more they're turning. turning. And look at this. They're just. I'm telling you, these things are so cold, they're like they're in a refrigerator. And isn't that awesome? They're just everywhere in here. So, we should have tomatoes for a while if nothing happens. And behind Danny is the yellow wax beans that we've been... Cherokee yellow wax beans. Now, we've been just, eating on them. There uh, may be a few left in here, scattered around, up under in there. There may be a few... Um, right here. They're putting on a second bloom is what they're doing. Yeah. So we're going to get some more to eat. We've eaten out of them a couple of three times now, I think. Yep. And here, I forgot what these were some running beans I planted, and I forgot which ones I planted. But they're doing pretty good right here, and they're starting to bloom. All this is direct sowed in here. These are, uh, these are the same here? They just have Yellow wax yet. beans, no. I planted them in between because these others didn't come up. Okay. And then we have another bush okra in there. Yeah, I do see it. Yep. It's coming up, doing good. But it's like lavender? Yeah. So direct sowed in the greenhouse works usually on most things. And um, we don't heat it, so nope. it's had to do it on its own in a greenhouse with a little bit of controlled climate i guess you say but not much not much we'll let the sides down if it's going to be really really cold we'll let the sides down you found another tomato <laughs> well it's little but it'll it's a eat little bitty one, but it'll still eat go um, good on a salad yeah it ain't no different eating a cherry tomato you know? nope so we got to get our um english peas and we're going to pull a few carrots yeah y'all see right out there that bed's still full of that carrots. That bed is still loaded with we carrots. we got to break down and do some freeze drying. We pulled a few carrots, tomatoes, yellow wax beans, and English peas. I think we'll do some type of stir fry later. Okay, guys, this is one of our pear trees here. This one uh, blooms during the really hard, hard freeze, but... They still, this tree is loaded with pears. I mean, it, there's, everywhere you look, there's pears. Now, there's still some dead leaves from, you know, some dying from where it got bit so hard. But Looks it, doesn't, like... it doesn't have as many pears on it as it did have. Here's what we're facing with a lot of them. See this here, how the, the freeze froze the end of that pear? It'll probably die and fall off. And lots of them have already fell off. But some but, of them are... But there's lots of them that are still really, really good. So we're going to have some pears on it. And this is the moon glow. This is the moon glow. We have a few, like here. Uh, there's a few of the moon glows on there. Um, we have more than we've ever had on it. I'll say that. This is a graft I got from uh, Mr. Oki Rob, who has a YouTube channel. Um, I grafted it onto a little limb here because I didn't know if it would actually take and the freeze got in here and got and when we had that hard hard freeze because it bloomed out before the tree even had any leaves on it the top of it right here you can see uh the freeze got the little pears on it it had some little pears but the freeze got them but the graft's taken the graft is took so i'm i gotta do i gotta get in here and do some pruning because there's a lot of 
a lot of growth in here this tree don't need up in the middle of it up in here and stuff i got to get all this cut out where the tree can actually breathe up through the middle usually this tree don't hardly ever have any pears on it but this year for some reason i guess it's just finally gotten big enough and old enough that it's going to have a few pears on it this year now the other one behind us here this one is usually loaded with pears too but it bloomed during the hard, hard freeze. And a lot of them, here's a prime example. One right there froze and the one right next to it did not. Um, <laughs> go figure. Go, I don't know why it is that way, but I don't see a lot of pears on this tree, but don't let that fool you because last year we didn't see many on it <laughs> and it had a bumper crops on it. You but can't tell because of the leaves. It has so many leaves, it's just hard to tell. But I really don't see that many on And this there. is one of our oldest trees. Yes, this is one of the older trees. Um, now they, they could be some up higher up in there, we just don't see. Uh, but I see one right here. You won't never know. Once yeah. you move that, I see several behind it. Oh, I do. I see them right up in yonder now, right here. Yeah. Right up in there. I was going to say, they hide so well up in there. Uh, but pears is one of our main staples here at Deep South Homestead. We try to make sure we have lots of pears because I eat pears all the time. Uh, I took a container in the high tunnel, if y'all followed me along, and I sprinkled my uh, seeds in there and covered them up. I wanted to grow my own onion sets. Well, what you're looking at here, when we planted these, these little onions was about this big. <laughs> I never even, I, I told Wanda, I said, they probably will never make it. So they were about that size of this grass here. And guys, this is where we're at today right here. I mean, these things Put are, your hand around that one. I can't even, I can't reach all the way around it. So it's a good three inches in diameter. And uh, I just put some more nitrogen to them the other now, day. some of them are still. Some of them are still tiny. I don't expect to have the onion crop this year that I got last year, but this is very poor sandy soil right here. I stuck them here because I really just, to be honest with you, I didn't think they was gonna do anything. And they have turned out to start making some bulbs. I did get the calcium to them, I mean, not calcium, nitrogen to them the other day. Look, we got a volunteer. But I think if they hold in, we had that four inch rain and it washed a lot of the dirt away from them. But now starting right here, it's these the, were the Texas legends. The tag's gone. Yeah, the tag's gone. This was Texas legend. The 1015s are right here. And when we get right here, the white Bermudas pick up and go from that point on down. Now the and white Bermuda- We've is, never grown the white ones. Well, they're just, they're not sweet. They're pretty, they're pretty uh, pungent is the word. But they're I guess. nice to use and stuff. Oh yeah, they're still a good onion to use. Now I didn't get all of them ringed like I did all the others. I started ringing around them uh, and they may or may not do, I don't know. But we're gonna show them the little transplants that we got that were almost dead that we put at pecan grove a yes. month ago yes we're gonna run over to pecan grove we're gonna show you the difference in a dead transplant yeah that was done in the spring these were put in these were put in in uh november november the end of november uh the transplants over at pecan grove was put in about a month ago maybe got, two was it two months ago or maybe was, two months maybe two months ago but we got them at a uh, hardware store. Yes, here in town. But they sent them late. They sent them late to the, I, I think there was just some they had left over and they just sent them out to these different stores. And uh, we saw them when we walked in there and I told her, I said, they'll probably never make, but you know what, they'll make a green onion. So let's just get a bundle or two. And we took them over to Pecan Grove, which is totally different soil than this. You can see this is just sandy. Over there, it's just deep, rich soil. And we're gonna look at the difference and some that was planted in the early, late winter, early spring versus early fall.
Well, guys, this is our elephant garlic here, and we there is something here I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, we had some bad erosion problems here, and the bulbs were exposed above the ground, and I just ran out there in the road and grabbed a scoop full of dirt to cover them up because there was a hard freeze coming, and I ended up getting a bunch of limestone out of the uh, driveway, and I want you to know the ones with the limestone around them right here seem to be doing a lot better than the ones that don't have the limestone around them. So, I mean, even here, see the limestone there? Yep. And see what that look one's at, doing? Look at the difference where that limestone is at. As so, compared to some of them. Yeah, we, we haven't got the whole bed cleaned out yet because we just do it periodically when we get a chance to come in here and do something. So the whole bed's not completely clean of weeds just yet. But the limestone, I want to show you all that. The garlic evidently really loves lime. This is one of our kefir pears. We planted it here behind the cabin. This is probably three, maybe four years old, but I know three years old, babe, probably. Um, blooming, doing good. Mayhaws, for everybody that wants to know what a mayhaw is. It looks like a little mini, mini apple, <laughs> crab apple, sort of, kind of, but it's yeah. a mayha. Makes some fine jelly. Those mayhaws are, <laughs> we call them the southern apple. Uh, they mainly grow in the river swamps. Uh, you see how wet it is behind it. Yeah, they grow next to water. Uh, and lots of times you just harvest them off of the water. You actually just go in and scoop them up off of water. And because uh, they grow in the river swamps, but these we got growing out here on the hill next to water. And they're called mayhaws because usually they get ready in May. Well, I'm being honest, we haven't paid a lot of attention to them. And you see the weeds has grown up around them and all. And I come out here this morning to shoot this video and told one day I says, oh my word, look, they're everywhere. They're way like a month early. We knew they were on here. Oh, we knew they were here. But we did, We weren't expecting them to be ripe till close to the end of April 1st of May. Right. This is April 2nd. This is, yes, this is April and 2nd. Way ahead, way ahead. I mean... Way ahead. If this is any indication of how... And these went through the freeze. Yeah. They went through that, that freeze. That real hard freeze. So, we're going to have quite a few of these... And that ain't including what's on the tree. And usually you shake the tree. Yeah, usually you do. So I told Wanda, I said, what we'll do, we'll pick up what's on the ground, we'll mow around it as good as we can, and then we'll just bump a tree, lay something on the ground, bump a tree, and try to pick them up. Well, guys, the onions, uh, believe it or not, are starting to bulb over here. I just realized that. Uh, the ground, I'm seeing it cracking. We gotta get over here and do some ringing. And these were planted two months ago or less. Yeah. And they looked horrible. They were really bad looking. They're deep in the ground. They need to be ringed. I can so see that. November versus Jan was it January, February? Yeah, probably February when we planted these. 
I mean, you can see they're starting to bulb. Yeah. Now these look like white. They do. Onion. It was two different types of onions. Yeah, there. These was the 1051s, I believe, 1015s, I believe, what was on the thing. Uh, and I did come over and put the nitrogen to these the other day. Now these are a different variety and they're yeah, smaller. These are the red ones here. The red bells, I believe, yeah. is what these were. And they're smaller. They're always later. There was a few over here I did. And yeah. then there was some back here. Y'all stuck way back here in the weed. Right here. Yes. I put the nitrogen to them too. So the purple ones are a little later than the others, but they're still looking good. Yeah, they're still coming on. Now, the potatoes, we've got some of these, right, like right here, the plants are gone. I dug those two. Uh, them plants are still there. Oh, no, I dug right here. And then here's one's gone. Uh, one right here, gone. So we won't have to get the shovel and uh, dig a few potatoes. Uh, potatoes Ex is way ahead. Now, the potatoes were potatoes that we saved. These two rows here are the ones we saved, the French Fingerling and the uh, Purple Majesties. Uh, this row over here is the Red Lesotas. I bought those in town from a feed store and planted them probably... A month after these. Yeah, probably a month after these because they didn't get here for a month. And we went ahead and planted these ahead of time. And these have been chopped off twice. Yes, these went through the hard freeze and then another freeze. And, and these were planted after the hard freeze. Yes, but they still went through one freeze. Yes. And didn't kill them. Uh, but these these are trying to come back in some spots, but some spots are just the plants are just dying. So we're going to go ahead and take the shovel and we're going to dig up a few of them this morning. Okay, guys, this is the Danny corn. Uh, we have a beautiful stand of it out here. Uh, some of it's ahead of the others by just a little bit. I, I don't know if the planter planted some of them a little deeper than others. I'm not sure how all that works, but these here are a good uh, six to seven inches tall, and some of them are just now starting to pop through the ground. So I'm going to have to wait a little longer before I actually plow them. If I don't, I will cover them up, the little plants, and I don't want to do that. And then, you know, some of the little ones that's coming up is where I I came back like if there was a gap, say a two foot gap, I come back and put a couple of seeds in them because corn is such a precious commodity to me right now. I didn't want to waste any space. So um, we're just going to play it by ear. We're going to see how it goes. Now, this is another one of the direct so seed crops that we do. Uh, this is done with the uh, cub and the Richmond planter system. Uh, the 176. And it done a really good job on it. Now, I will say this. It's a little thick. I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to do some thinning out. But I would rather let it get a little bit bigger before I do any thinning out in the corn. Uh, I just, I want to pick my healthiest, largest stalks before I do any thinning out at all. Now we have a couple of uh, pepper plants here, three of them. These were bought at, in town. They went through the really hard freeze. Ms. Wanda had them covered up and it looks like they're doing pretty good. As a matter of fact, they're about ready to bloom, some of them. They do have little blooms in spots. Yeah, they're looking really, right down really in good. There. Now, I did put a little bit of nitrogen to them. Not much, just a little bit. And these are her tomatoes. She had a couple of tomato plants. There, uh, I did fertilize them. And I bought these. Yeah, these were bought. Doing, doing really, really they, good. These are celebrities. Yes, they're celebrities. Yeah, and they're already blooming in the top. These yeah. were um, two that I bought and covered during the freeze we got a few okra plants here that ms wanda planted uh, they're small but they're fighting to survive there's a couple more right here i see all direct sowed yeah everything's direct sowed and these got what oh uh, here 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 they come all the way down through here 
And then there's a skip, and then there's a couple right here. And it looks like the bugs are trying to eat them off a little bit or something or other. And we don't know about bugs, so... Yeah, I don't know about bugs. And I notice you've got a few bean plants over here. Now, I had a direct... I mean, I direct sowed uh, green... This one's been eat off. I can see that. Contenders. Okay. And so I had a full line of them. So some of them may be getting eat off, but you see there's a few there down to a packet, and then I put something else in the other end that did not come up. Okay, this is a cucumber that was a direct sow right here. And then another one here that looks like a direct sow right there. But then again, they look a little like squashes to me. Did you plant squashes here? I have some of everything. So I have direct sowed here, and then we bought cucumber plants here. Yeah, they had some on sale in town, so we just picked up a few while we were there. Yeah, these, uh, those are a couple over there. And see, they're growing, some are growing really well. Yeah. And these were direct sowed and covered during the cold. I'm getting some good sized potatoes. Yeah, they're pretty decent for having gone through a freeze. Yeah, Twice. <laughs> Twice. 